Now that you have the bike and all the accessories, what should you be wearing when you're out cycling? The obvious choice is traditional Lycra cycling kit, but if you don't feel quite ready for that, perhaps you aren't, let's say, the perfect shape, I would suggest wearing something that is at the very least vaguely sporty, such as a t-shirt and shorts or tracky bottoms. Not only will you need clothes that give you freedom of movement, you'll also need something that will allow sweat and perspiration to evaporate. Believe me, the last thing you want is to be riding in heavy, cold and clammy, sweat-soaked clothes. Not nice and actually not all that good for you. This is where Lycra Kit comes into its own. It allows total freedom of movement, it wicks away moisture, more often than not it will have extra padding in the arse area and it won't flap about catching the wind and acting like a mini parachute to slow you down. Granted it's not the most stylish or flattering of looks, particularly if like me you have a slightly more manly frame, but it really is the best thing to wear on the bike. Fortunately, people of all shapes and sizes are getting into cycling, so you no longer have to be some kind of anorexic whippet to wear Lycra. If nothing else, it will give you the psychological boost of making you feel like a proper cyclist. If you do go down the Lycra route, shorts come in two flavours, regular and bib. As you would imagine, regular shorts just come up to waist level and sometimes have a drawstring to tighten them. Bib shorts, on the other hand, look a bit like a pair of dungarees and use your shoulders to hold them up. Which ones you choose is entirely up to you, but many women cyclists prefer regular shorts as it makes taking what the pros call a natural break a bit easier. I personally prefer bib shorts as they're slightly more flattering and I don't have to worry about them falling down. You also have a choice of leg length, short for summer riding and medium or long for off-season riding. A useful tip when actually buying shorts is to choose black ones. That way you can mix and match with your jersey. Jerseys themselves can be short or long sleeved with half or full zip. If you think you'll get quite hot riding in the summer, go for the full zip version, as you can open it up for maximum ventilation. Long sleeve jerseys on the other hand are only really used during the winter off season. Nearly all jerseys come with three or more pockets at the back. These are very useful for carrying little essentials such as your phone, puncture repair kit, extra food and clothing. Many cyclists also wear a thin cotton base layer under their jersey, as this prevents the lycra rubbing directly against your skin, which can cause minor chafing when you get sweaty. Because weather can be very changeable, particularly here in the UK, it's a good idea to invest in a pair of arm and leg warmers. These can be easily rolled up and fitted into your jersey pockets, and put on and taken off as the weather deteriorates or improves. Similarly, you'll need a showerproof gilet or even a full-on rain jacket. It's also a good idea to invest in a couple of pairs of cycling-specific gloves, long-fingered to actually keep your hands warm in the winter and fingerless mitts to protect your hands in the summer. Cycle-specific gloves are also padded on the palms to reduce vibration from the handlebars. A pair of sunglasses will not only make it easier to see on bright days, but they will also prevent your eyes from tearing up on windy descents and from all kinds of things from dust to insects getting in your eyes. If you plan on doing any winter riding, a buff is great for keeping your head and ears warm. Similarly, a little Tour de France style casquette will prevent sweat from your forehead getting in your eyes. And crash hats. I've left this until now because, believe it or not, wearing one or not wearing one is probably the single most controversial issue in cycling at the moment. Here in the UK and in certain US states we're free to choose, but in Australia and New Zealand you have to wear one by law. I've made a separate film outlining the debate, so please watch that if you need the lowdown, 
but for the record, I personally wouldn't ride without one. Finally, shoes. Cycling shoes are designed to have some form of cleat on the bottom that will attach the shoe and rider to the pedals, allowing them to pull on the upstroke as well as pushing on the downstroke, making pedaling up to 30% more efficient than just pushing down alone. Again, I've made another film explaining all about cycling shoes, but if you aren't quite ready for them, I would suggest using regular sport shoes. So there we go, that's the basics about what to wear when you're out cycling. If you have any questions, please leave a comment, but in the meantime, thank you for watching. Please like and share and check out some of my other films.